record and that the players got confidence, A, but B, there were just enough mistakes to where they had a lot to look at on film, a lot to correct in their practice week, and that's exactly what you want. Now, one concern, I guess, for the Tarpons would be, man, there's been a weird school week here in southeast Louisiana. You know, you miss school a couple of days and you don't have school today because of a professional day. And I know that coaches are routine driven and the routine has been completely yeah, off this week. So we'll see if that has any lingering effect come kickoff time. And, and certainly with the weather conditions, uh, the way the way they've been uh, as well, that makes practice uh, difficult. And, and so, uh, yeah, and, and then this De La Salle team, uh, one of the top ten teams in the state, uh, no matter what division they're in, and, and number one in 3A. De La Salle is a bear. We're going to see a lot of them tonight. Obviously, they are coming off of a Jamboree victory as well. They scored a uh, two or three touchdown victory over Ponchatoula at their Jamboree. Um, Look, I, I don't know an, a lot about Ponchatoula's team this year, but you know they always have a solid squad. If you're beating them decisively, you know that you're doing some things right. De La Salle is arguably going to be one of the better teams, if not the best team the Tarpons play all I year. I think the Cavaliers really uh, uh, must run the ball a lot, and that's because they, they find success there. And you know how that is, Casey, uh, in, in coaching. When things are working, you're going to stick with that until the defense can prove that they can stop it. I was reading in NOLA.com um, in that jamboree, De La Salle had something like 300 total yards, about 270 of those were on the ground. So we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, – they're going to be doing a lot of work up front, trying to get some holes, trying to get some guys in space, and we'll see if the Tarpons are going to be up for the challenge. Obviously, uh, if there was something that the defense did well last Friday, they did stop the run very well. I believe Coach Forsythe was saying they held Whitecaster something like 20 yards rushing in the jamboree. So that was certainly – could be a matchup of styles here tonight. Well, certainly uh, the Tarpons will have their work cut out for them in trying to stop Kendall Collins, who had uh, yeah. 16 rushes, 197 yards, and three touchdowns. He's not difficult to find on the roster. Number one in the program, <laughs> literally, is that Kendall Collins. We're going to be calling his name a lot. Let's take our first commercial break, a three-minute break. We, when we get back, Ken and I will keep the pregame train rolling. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans at South Lafourche and De La Salle in about 25 minutes. Lady of the Sea After Hours Clinic has moved to the new Lady of the Sea Cutoff Clinic, located directly in front of the hospital off of Highway 1 in Gallieto. The same After Hours staff will continue to see patients from 5 to 9 p.m. weekdays and 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on weekends with no appointment necessary. Now the convenience of a walk-in clinic with a pharmacy at the same location is available for our community. Same provider in a new environment. Lady of the Sea After Hours Clinic, here when you need us. Your life is mobile, so is your bank. As a state bank and trust company account holder, you can check your balances, view transactions, transfer funds, and pay bills anywhere or anytime with state bank and trust companies' online banking or mobility app. Call or stop by any state bank and trust location for all the details. State bank and trust company, agent banking, served just the way you like it. Member FDIC. Advanced Eye Institute in Cutoff is your hometown eye care provider. Dr. Darby Chasson is here to serve the eye care needs of your entire family. Full service eye medical and vision services are provided in a friendly atmosphere. For the latest in designer frames to advancements in astigmatism and bifocal contact lenses, call Advanced Eye Institute at 985-632-2884 for your appointment today or visit their website sure at visionsource-drbychasson.com. So Joe Septic Contractors has specialized in the installation of sewer systems, field drains, and vacuum truck services for 40 years. It's one of the largest sanitation companies in Louisiana. Call Joe Septic Contractors today about their rentals on portable toilets, holding tanks, iron hand wash stations, and air conditioned restroom trailers for your next event. Call Joe Septic Contractors today at 985-632-5592 or visit their website at www.joeseptic.com. Good luck to Mason Boudreau, number 32. Go Colonels! Hi, Bob Barker, General Manager of Bush Ford Lincoln. What defines a winner? Is it 41 years in a row as a best-selling truck? Could be. Is it that Ford is the number one selling brand in America? Hmm, could be. Is it Lincoln's lineup of cars and SUVs? Seems like a trend here. Well, my friends, it's all of that. So come on down to 5878 Highway 1 and drive the cars and trucks that have made us number one at the Bush Ford Lincoln. Vision Communication is proud to announce Lightwave, a breakthrough in television viewing. The interactive programming 
guide is awesome for finding your favorite shows quickly. More channels are available, plus multi-room DVR, easy to search video on demand, and new apps such as local weather. You can even customize your settings for more control. Lightwave is here. Call today to get a great introductory offer. It's part of our promise to bring you a better vision. The flagship station of the Colonel Sports Radio Network, ESPN New Orleans. And welcome back. We have almost exactly 20 minutes before kickoff. Casey just clear here with Ken Freeland. The South Solution Daily Sound will be coming in about 20 minutes. Um, earlier, we kind of gave a rundown of what both teams did in their jamboree. But, Ken, while we got a little bit of time, I want to talk a little college football. Man, what a ball game last night at John L. Guidry Stadium in Thibodeau. Nichols has been looking for a signature win for a while. Boy, did they get one in a big way last night. Uh, I'm uh, Went to the game last night. My two sons, my uh, my older grandson uh, Alex, we all, we all made the trip up there, and uh, a lot of people on campus before the game, and uh, did a lot of hobnobbing and and the seeing people that I went to college with, uh, relatives, friends from the area, the home side of Nichols. And I didn't scope it all out, but it, it wasn't full. It was pretty darn close on the visitor side, and I, I think there were some Nichols students on the other yeah. side. But there was a good crowd on the other side as well. I was so happy to see that because that's a football program that they're on the way back up. And, you know, they had struggled for such a long time. Now the, the community is starting to buy in. They're starting to get that support. And, look, they've got a really doggone good football team. McNeese is a quality team. Absolutely. To beat that, that Cowboy squad, that's a huge signature win for Coach Rebo. Uh, very, very much so. And it was, I guess it was interesting that uh, one of the uh, – the players for the McNeese State Cowboys, his last name is, uh, o is Ogeron, huh? One of the guys Parker, wearing huh? a cowboy shirt was a uh, <laughs> fella named Ogeron last night as well. Bebe was out there. Yeah, he was. It's a good segue. Um, tomorrow night at about 8.30, I got a feeling my television as well as yours will be on a certain <laughs> dial oh as LSU is going to be taking on BYU. The, the big circle is on my schedule, certainly. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a, a wonderful game la uh, tomorrow night, I, I hope, and uh, – if the uh, Tigers aren't at full strength, it'll be pretty close to it. BYU, I ESPN1003.com, Facebook, Twitter. We got the, the entire stream, just like we did for the Jamboree. We'll be streaming this broadcast live. It's pretty neat with the, with the whole crew right next door to us, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. I like that you could go back and watch it after. Sure. It's in archives, and I think that that's a really neat thing. As Ken, here's one thing I want to ask you about. We're going to take another break here in just a minute as the band is making their way out onto the field. But... The Tarpons have just did the Tarpon Walk. This is the first Tarpon Walk of Coach Forsythe's career at South Lafouche. What do you think the emotions are? What do you think is going through his mind right now as he's getting ready to take the field? This has been something he's waited for his entire life to lead a team on the field as a head coach. What do you think are some of the emotions he's feeling right now? He's feeling, and he's probably telling the kids right now, the Bella South is just another team. You know, they put on the shoes the same way, the helmets and all that. He's hoping that his guys play under control, especially the first uh, first quarter, or certainly in the first half. If you can build a lead, that's fine. But you don't want to be down by two or three touchdowns going into halftime. This is a very good De La Salle team. He wants to see what his kids are made of tonight. Where exactly in the city is De La Salle? Do you know? I do, and I've been there. I thought maybe it was around, it's not around City Park, but it's Maybe a garden district, or I'll see if I can look that up. Okay. I'll, I'll find it on the map. I've <laughs> been there once, and that was that was 50 years ago, so I don't remember everything. No, I understand. And I just moved to New Orleans when I went there. I understand. So kickoff is still about 15 minutes away. What we're going to do is we're going to catch another three-minute break. When we get back, we're going to keep the pregame train rolling. 
Top LaFouche and De La Salle will be rocking and rolling here in just a couple minutes, we promise. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. We'll be right back after this. Starting when and how to retire is one of the most important financial decisions you'll ever make. Do you take a lump sum? Do you have to pay taxes on this money? How do you invest during retirement to make sure you don't outlive your income? What health insurance plans are available? With such an overwhelming number of questions, the most important decision you can make is to seek the advice of a trusted, qualified advisor. Chris Godet has served the area for over 12 yeah, years St. and Charles has the expertise okay. to work with you to find the right solutions. Give Chris Godet a call at 632-6049. Football fans everywhere are getting geared up for the start of football season. You can tell the opposing team that we tailgate harder than your team plays. And we do that while we shop at French Supermarket. They can cater your tailgating party with delicious fruit and cheese trays, chicken drumettes, egg rolls, finger sandwiches, chicken tender yeah, trays, hot rolls, and more. They can even customize there. a football cookie cake with your favorite team. Coming in perfect, bro. Yeah, yeah, Joe right, pick up your catering radio. menu today at the French yeah. Supermarket location nearest you. Uh, does Jerry? Personal service has been and will continue to be our signature. But we've embraced technologies that can enhance our customers' lives, including our newly released SL Bank mobile app. Well, this free service now, allows you sure. to bank on the go using your smartphone or tablet. Simply enroll and download our mobile banking app from the App Store. It's just another way SL Bank is making your banking better. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Message and data rates may apply. Training well, in order suicide to the oil field industry. It has been an excellent ride for me. Join the team that does it different at Danos.com. That's D A N O S.com. Casey, there's something about you and insects at a game. Yeah, there's no an SBS right? construction repair and restoration. Yeah, wasp. Dragonflies, <laughs> was it something else last year? Yeah, PS construction man, repair and restoration, safely protecting pipelines, people, and the environment. Southern Pipeline Services, a quality cathodic protection, corrosion control, and pipeline maintenance contractor. SPS construction repair and restoration can handle all of your land clearing, drainage, pipeline repairs, erosion control, demolition, and more. Southern Pipeline Services, locations in Houston and Raceland. Good luck, Tarpons. Archie Manning here for Thibodeau Regional. In the Manning household, you could say, we're pretty serious about sports. That and just like the expert you, team at Sports Medicine Jefferson Center of Street. Thibodeau Regional, yeah. we're this also very serious about sports safety, especially... awfully long time I believe I was reading on the internet they had the longest regular season winning streak in Louisiana so South 28 or also slash 8 and Evan Fouche uh, number 85 will be in there as well and they'll intermingle some of the uh, the, p the players obviously and, and all those kids got a lot of playing time that last week and uh, again showed us a lot of good things whether they were on offense or defense I was texting Corbin Allen earlier in the week. I said, man, Corbin, what's up with the 28 or 8 thing? And he said, yeah, it just depends how I feel on that given Friday. <laughs> He's been number 8 so far this year. He's going to be number 8 again tonight. <laughs> so uh, the running backs just decided, hey, whatever mood I'm in on that day, that's the jersey I'm going to wear. When you produce like that young man does, you get a little bit of extra leeway. Well, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you, you feel you're in a, a blue shirt mood or – But then before you know it, he's got 89 yards rushing and a touchdown. He had a big jamboree, and I think that he's going to be a big weapon throughout the season for this Tarpons team as the uh, season is going to be opening here in just a minute. Can you remember the last two years, South LaFouche opened the season against Bonneville. That uh, series got discontinued with the coaching change. 
for the Tarpons have started 1-0 and the last two years. And they're going to look to continue that trend tonight as De La Salle takes the field. Tarpons look like they're getting some final words from Coach Forsythe, and they will be doing the same. And again, I'll be interested to see what we uh, get on the plate from uh, De La Salle because uh, they, from what I could read and, and looking at, uh, as you said, the newspaper reports, they can run the football. And it looked like just, you know, I don't want to take too, too much from their warm-ups, but it looked like it was shotgun. So it looked like, yeah. you know, it's not like a wing T kind of thing. They're going to just run some spread like everyone else does. One thing that you and I both made note of, their special teams looks to be very sound. They were punting the ball deep down the field. They were kicking the ball deep down the field. So if it comes down to that third phase, they may have an advantage. It's, am it's amazing how that, that part of town can have so many good special team players. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so before we get into too much trouble, <laughs> let's take I mean, one was more. That, that wasn't an editorial <laughs> comment, was it? <laughs> let's take one more break, <laughs> one last three-minute break. When we get back, we're going to have the opening kick between the Tarpons and De La Salle. We'll be right back after this. If you need help with your next project, new construction, remodeling, or a do-it-yourself project, you can trust the experienced staff at Dufresne Building Materials. Dufresne has been covering your building needs since 1953. The second generation working on...
Looks like number six and number seven, B.J. Randall and Lance Robinson. A couple of seniors back to receive for the Cavaliers. One of ten. About ready to rock and roll here. The return men for the Cavs are at a, just inside the ten-yard line. Torres at the Jamboree was kicking it to about the 15 or so. And we are underway. It is a low line drive kick fielded at about the 20 by Randall looking to the middle of the field. And he's bottled up by a school of Tarpons. Good job there. He fielded it at about the 20. He's brought down to the 25. So a good start for the Tarpon special teams. He, he tried to bull his way at about the 25 yard line. And he ran, a, and I think he, he ran into his own man because uh, his blocker was being pushed back by the Tarpons uh, cover team. So the ball is going to be just right of the center of the field. And the Tarpon defense is on the field. De La Salle joins them now. And we're going to be rolling. The quarterback today for De La Salle, let's see, it looks like it's number 10, Julian Gums, senior. He's joined in the backfield by Kendall Collins. We talked in the pregame about him. Shotgun set, four receivers. Gums takes the snap, a little swing pass out to Randall looking for space. He's got a bunch of space, 35, 40. So one play, the Cavs get about 15 yards and a first down. And, uh, Tarpons didn't appear to rotate over that time uh, for that defensive situation. And they're on the ball immediately at the 41 yard line, first and 10. No huddle look. Gums with the same four wide receiver set. Gets the snap. Same play, a swing pass to the other side out to Marquis. He's got some room, a first down across the 50, and he's wrestled down at about the 38. So they're just snapping it and throwing it to the slot guy, and they're doing a good job blocking. They get another first down. Again, they're just out there they're moving a little quicker than the Tarpons are, and then the Tarpons, I guess, can't afford to have a man come up to uh, play that right off the, 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 uh, the completion. Ball's marked at the 39-yard line. Tarpon territory on the right hash. De La Salle going right to left. Gums waiting for the snap. Same formation. Fakes a handoff. There's the same swing pass out to Randall. Looking for room. He's got it. He gets outside. 25-20, 15. There's a flag on the play as he's brought down at the 11. And I think there may be an illegal block yeah. there, which will save the Tarpons because they've run that same play three times in a row now. And, and until the Tarpons show that they can, can stop that play, Cavaliers will yeah. keep running that. Waiting for the signal here. It looked like it may be an illegal yeah. block in the back, and they are calling the offense back. The flag is at the 29-yard line. So it's up the field. So even with the, the violation, it's not going to be a first and 20 situation. They spotted the ball at the 29, but they haven't walked anything right. off yet. Let's get the call holding. On, well, we just got a hold. He didn't point in any direction. They're bringing out the chains. Maybe to see if, I, I don't know. Was that penalty after he picked up the first down? Perhaps, yeah. I'm a little confused here as what yeah. we're measuring this. But it is a hold on De La Salle, we assume. And by stretching the chains out, it is a first down, I believe, huh? And now they're going to mark it off. And they're bringing the ball 10 yards back to the 39-yard line. So it looks like it'll be almost exactly first mm -hmm. and 10 again. 11.06 to go in the opening quarter. We're just underway between South LaFouche and De La Salle. The two wise guys in the booth talked about how De La Salle would run the ball. And they've come out throwing so far. I think they're adjusting maybe to something they saw yeah. on, on game tape from last week uh, on the part of the Tarpons uh, defense. Yeah, it's just been some quick hitters. They get the snap, throw a little swing pass, and they're getting the edges. So after the penalty, it will be first and about 10 and a half here for the Cavaliers. Four wide receivers set, the ball on the left hash. Gums gets the snap. Looking for help, looking for help. Now he's rolling right. Now he comes back left, nearly loses his footing, but he's got a lot of room. 40, 35, 30, and he's bottled up, but he gets a first down. The Tarpons had him boxed up, but he reversed his field, showed a lot of athleticism, and gained about 15 yards. 
So the initial pursuit was good, but then he got outside of the tackle. Well, that time he wanted to go outside, but Jeremy, Jeremy Rogers had the play covered. So that's a good uh, just reversal of fortune for, uh, for Rebella Sal. It'll be first and 10 ball just inside the 25-yard line on the left hash again. That same four receiver shotgun set. They're going no huddle, but it's not really a hurry up. They're just no. getting on the ball and looking at the sideline. Now it's a five receiver set, no one in the backfield. Gums gets the snap, it's a quick hitter and he shoots it way over the receiver's head. That was intended for Ivan Pass, but no one had a chance to catch that one. Tarpons have, have moved up a little bit as far as a man cover is concerned. South Lafouche wins that down, it'll be second and 10. De La Salle shuffling some personnel. Looks like they're going with a more heavy package mm -hmm. here. Got a couple of extra tackles in. Two receivers still out of the gun. Gums gets the snap. He hands it up the middle, looking for yardage, and he gets a couple. That's Kendall Collins on the carry. But a good job there. The Tarpon middle of the defense held firm. They gain about three or four on the play. Now you'd think, Casey, with third and long, maybe they try to move something to the wide side of the field. Yep. Well, now they move the ball back to the middle, but still a little bit wide side to the, uh, to the right. So third and about seven here. Let's see if the Tarpons could force them into a fourth down situation. Two receivers set, still out of the gun. Gums waiting for the snap. He gets it. He hands it up the middle to Collins, and the Tarpons are all over. Good job Big defensively Gou there. Big Gouger came up and made the initial, initial stop. So they get about two yards on the play. The ball be right around the 20 yard line. They've got to get to the 15 for a first down. And they're on the ball, they're going for it. Fourth and five, maybe trying to draw them off sides here. Gums almost a, it almost looked like a hard count, huh? Yep. Three minutes in, they have plenty of time on the play clock. They look to the sideline. And now they rock and roll. They hand it up the middle, looking for room. He didn't get it. He did not get it. He's bottled up at the 18-yard line. The Tarpon defense holds firm. It looks like number four there, Drake Billy out on the nice tackle. Job. Turnover on downs. So the Tarpon defense there up to the challenge on that fourth and five play, and they'll take over at the 18-yard line. A rough start to the drive, but they stiffened up when they needed to, much like the Colonels did last night. Good red zone defense they, there. And they made a few adjustments defensively up, up, up front and along the line of scrimmage. Good job that time. Brock Baia in the center, his second career start. He started the season opener last year against Bonneville. Looked very sharp in the jamboree. First and 10, ball at the 18-yard line. Four receivers set, three of the receivers on the left side of the field. Baia. Keeps it up the middle, he's got room, and he gets out to about the 24 yard line, a good gain of about six on first down. Kind of picked up where he left off last week, Casey. Deceptive runner, I'm telling you, Ken. Gain of about six, it'll be second and a long four. Tarpons did an excellent job moving the line of scrimmage against White Castle, and at least on the first snap here, they get six yards. Pistol look. Three receivers. Allen is behind Baya. Brock waiting for the snap. He hands it to Corbin this time. He breaks a tackle out across the 25-30. And he's brought out at about the 33-yard line. Boy, they were waiting for Corbin. As he received the handoff, he did a nice little spin move and got outside for a first down. A Golden Motors first down. He gave him the old look like he was going to cut it upfield. Gave that move. Picked up some extra yardage. He got it. One more yard than I thought. He's out to the 34-yard nice. line. Tarpons have a first and 10, trying to perhaps get an early lead here. De La Salle drove down the field, got stopped inside the 20-yard line. Galjor and Allen are on the side of Baya, who hands it to Allen in the middle, looking for yardage. There's not much there, but he's pushing forward. Gets about two or three. Good job defensively there by the Cavaliers. Allen did end up getting about four yards, though. About three and a half. It'll be second and a long six. Tarpon's being very methodical. You could see they're going to want to control possession here. They're not hurrying up like De La Salle is. Bayo with a handful of receivers to the left. 
One to the right and a pistol. Allen behind him. Gets the snap. It's a stretch run to Allen. He's got a little room to the outside. Now he jukes back in, fighting for yardage. Gets a couple just inside the 40-yard line. It'll bring up third and about five or six. 6.50 in the opening quarter, still scoreless. Happy you're with us on ESPN New Orleans and ESPN 1003.com. Uh, it's wide side of the field to the right. Let's see if Brock uh, tries that little rollout and forces Dallas out to commit to are they going to cover him for the run and can he throw the ball to the outside? What's going to happen? They hit White Castle with that a couple of times. They got three receivers out to the strong side of the field to the right. Bayo rolls out there. It's a little bubble screen. Right. It's caught. Farty. Looking for room. He's got a Golden Motors first down. That is number 11, Jack Blanchard. Didn't think he had the room at first, but he broke a tackle, got near midfield. That's another first down. Picked up about 10 yards on that, and, and that's with that wide side of the field, especially with that quarterback who's, who's right-handed. I know, I know Brock can go right or left, but that was a good play. But good play call. And first good, and 10. Good execution. Bought the Tarpon 49-yard line. Six minutes in ticking in the opening quarter. Tarpon staying in a gun, four receivers, two on each side. The ball's on the right side of the field. Galjor in motion now. Baya fakes a handoff, looks to get outside. He's looking to get across the 50, but he's tripped up. It'll be no gain. He maybe lost a half yard. Good open field tackle by Lance Robinson there. He lost his footing just a little bit, and the defender finished him off. And let's see, is this a water timeout? Yep, heat and humidity timeouts. Let's take a one-minute break. We'll be right back. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. Brian, check. but not much more. Gets about two yards out to the 49 of De La Salle. And that's where they put it exactly on the 49 yard line. It would be third and eight for South Lafouche. Five, excuse me, 455 and counting here in the opening quarter. Still scoreless. The Tarpons have their first possession after forcing a turnover on downs in De La Salle's first possession. Four receiver set. Three receivers are on the strong side of the field, which is to the left. Baya rolls that way. Looking for a man, looking for a man, and he's sacked. Dropped for a big loss out to the 43-yard line. That was number eight, Noble Scott, who bottled him up. And looking down the field, he didn't have any option. A good coverage and, and, there by the Cavs. And rolling left like that, it's hard to maybe try to throw it out of bounds because you have to kind of stop and turn your body to throw. The Tarpons are bringing the punt team out onto the field. Promising drive. If you could get a good boot here, you could flip the field. Let's get an ID on the old punter here. That is, looks to be Schick Snyder, 72. Back to receive is B.J. Randall, number six for the Cavs. Got to get the good snap, which they do. The snap is down. The kick is up, and it's uh, wounded Pundo, as they say. Bounces at the 33, but gets a good tarp and roll and they're going to down it at the 22-yard line. So they get about a 10-yard roll, and De La Salle got a little pressure there on the punter. They were lucky to get it down the field as far as they did. So 3.43 to go in the opening quarter. De La Salle will get their second shot at it here. 
the South LaFouche actually uh, gained three yards on that punt exchange because the first time Dallas South had the football was at the 25. We'll take it. Let's see, they came out throw and had some success, then they shifted to the run game and Tarpons bottled that up. It's Gums in at quarterback. One receiver on each side and he's got Collins to his right in the backfield. They get the call from the sidelines. Waiting for the snap, five on the play clock. He gets the snap, straight drop and a fire. It's a little hook that's caught for about a seven or eight yard gain. That's caught by number 17, Aaron Marquez. Very basic, just a two step drop and throw it out there. The receiver caught it about five yards down the field, got an extra couple of yards on the run. And it'll be second and two. And they're on the ball again. Gums gets a snap, hands it up the middle. Looking for some yardage as Collins. He's got a first down and more out to the 38 yard line. Gain of about seven or eight on that run. He turned what looked to be a very short gain into uh, what, it's about six, seven yards. He's a good one. This ball is at the 38, first and 10 for the Cavs. They're looking to the sideline. Clock will be inside of three minutes when this play is run. That same two receiver look. They've got a couple of tight ends on the line. Out of the gun, Gums, straight drop. There's that hook, boy, got jumped by Rogers, who batted it away. They fooled him once. You're not gonna fool Jeremy Rogers again. He made a nice break on that football. And if he was another half step quicker, he may have been the receiver of that football. That, that's that's a, a player who studied the film and it's great anticipation. He's second and 10 for the Cavaliers. Ball's at the 38 yard line. Clock is stationary, 2.51 to go in the opening quarter. Three receiver look. Gums, there's that swing pass again out to Randall, looking for room in the middle of the field. This time they do a much better job defending it, but you gotta bring him to the ground as he gets a couple of extra yards after contact out across the 45 yard line or right at the 45. Now they had him bottled for just a two or three yard game, but he's kind of squirted out of the pile there and got an extra couple of yards. Gouger, among others, in on the stop. This is third and exactly three yards. The chains are at the 48. The ball is at the 45. Big play here. Four receiver look. The ball's near the middle of the field. Three of the receivers are to the right side. Gums gets the snap. Quick shot out to 11. Marquez, and he gets a first down out across the 45 to the 43-yard line. You see their style, just a quick shot, just a little slant, a little hook. Absolutely, that's it. It's been very effective so far, as it'll be first and 10. Clock inside of two minutes in the opening quarter. Hello, Caleb South got down in this part of the field last time, couldn't convert. Now they're gonna try to put some points on the board here. Gums, straight drop, swing pass out to Collins. He's got a little room, but he's bottled up by Jeremy Rogers, among others, that's a good open field tackle, limiting him to a gain of five or six yards out across the 40 yard line. They're out quicking South LaFouche a little bit. Yeah, it's awfully tough. They put a lot of pressure on your defense. You've got to make a lot of open field tackles with the way that they play. The ball's at the 39, it's second and about five. Unless you can make a, pu a push defensively right up the middle and in a hurry, this is going to be hard to stop. Gums, oh, there's a bad snap. That'll Gums falls him. right on top of it, but he's all the way back near midfield. That's a big loss, a loss of about 11 on that play. Boy, it'll take that. It'll be third and long now. Third and about 16 coming up, and the ball is exactly at the middle of the field at the 50. And that's something you can't, you can't really uh, account for that, except maybe the ball's a little bit wet. I don't know, but it's not, I mean, it's not raining. Oh, just good composure there by Gums. Just, hey, live to play another day, fall on top of it, secure possession. Tarpon's got to keep everything in front of him here. It's third and 16. These are situations that gave them some problems in the Jamboree. They're doing a coverage defense right now. Gums gets the snap. Throws it deep down the field on the right side, and it is caught. I'll be doggone for a touchdown. Number six, B.J. Randall was kind of hand-fighting DeMarcus Kane 
And at the last minute, he got separation, caught the football, and then strutted into the end zone for the score. My goodness. So it's 17 seconds to go in the opening quarter. De La Salle strikes first. That was just a perfectly thrown football. And the coverage was decent. Yeah, Kane was there. Yeah. Randall made a play at the last split second. Now number 19, Flynn LaBresh will be on to kick the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is true. So it's 17 seconds to go in the opening quarter. De La Salle takes a 7-0 lead. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. It's about 80 yards down the field, 78-yard drive, and now they're going to be kicking it back to South Lafouche. Allen and Rodgers are deep. It's right down the middle of the field. Rodgers will field at the 10, going through the middle of the field out to the 20, looking for room, 25, and he's bottled up there. So good kick coverage by the Cavaliers, and the Tarpons are going to run maybe a snap or two in this first quarter as there are seven seconds left. Got 75 yards to go. De La Salle struck first. Now the Tarpons need an answer. See Ken's looking at the old iPad there. Do you have any scores yet, man? Um, I was going to post this one. I haven't yeah. seen too much yet. In between quarters, I'll take a peek and see if I can maybe get us something. Ball's on the left hash. The Tarpons are going to have three receivers to the right side of the field, which is the strong side of the field, and one receiver to the left. Bayou joined by Allen in the backfield. Gets the snap, hands it. No, he keeps it. Running to the strong side of the field, looking for room. He's got some room, gets across the 30 and gets about seven yards, and that'll be the end of the first quarter with our score. De La Salle 7, South LaFouche 0. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. Visit viscom.net slash home IQ to learn more. Louisiana license F1256. Just got one score to report so far. Vanderbilt is leading Thibodeau 10-0 out there wow. at Thibodeau High School. So the Terriers are off to a good start here. It's De La Salle 7, South LaFouche 0 after 1. The Tarpons will have a second and 3 at about the 32-yard line. Ball is on the right hash. And there are three receiver, or two receivers out to the strong side of the field. Now man in motion. Baya keeps it up the middle, looking for room. He's got a first down and more. Farty looking for room out to the 43. That's a Golden Motors first down for the Tarpons. Nice. He is so good at those fakes. It makes me, um, he's so good at it. I'll put it to you like this. And I'm aware to not give the call until I'm <laughs> sure who has he's the down. football. Ball is in between the 43 and 44 yard lines. Tarpons are playing a first and 10. This is their second drive of the game. Uh -oh. 
again? I don't like what I just did saw. Did you see some lightning? Uh, I know I did. Okay. Hopefully, uh, it's just a little heat lightning. It is warm out here. Baya gets the snap, hands it up the middle to Allen, looking for room out across the 45. He's bottled up at about the 46, a gain of a couple. Tested the middle of the defense, and a good job there by Ashton Robinson, a sophomore on the tackle. The Tarpons will be playing a second and about seven here. Getting the calls from Coach Forsyth. Tarpons have done a good job staying ahead of the chains. They haven't had very many long yardage situations. Baya with Allen to his side and Galjor behind them, a sort of a pistol look. The counter play, and he hands it to Galjor, and he's tripped up. That's going to be a loss of yardage there. Lance Robinson bottled him up. At back to the 41-yard line. That pitch was just a step behind him, and it yep. Jake had to turn around and pick it up. And but good defense, give it all the credit to uh, the Cavaliers. Yeah, they, they faked it to the middle, went outside, and both the middle and the outside were bottled up there. Now we talked about staying in front of the chains. It's third and 12 now. And we still see some Mother Nature out near the golf course. So keep our eyes on that. Third and 12. Three receivers to the strong side. Bayou rolls out. He's in a world of hurt. Throws it out to Sheremy, but he's got a lot of room to go. He gets maybe to the line of scrimmage. They brought a blitz there, and Corbin Allen didn't do the best job of picking it up. Bayou took a shot. Joby Sheremy came back to the football to catch it, but by the time he did that, he was behind the line of scrimmage. And the Tarpons are going to bring the punt team on. Ball's back to the 40-yard line or so. Check Snyder, the kicker, and let's see. It looks like number six or number eight for De La Salle. Ken's going to get me an ID here. He's got some better glasses than I do. Six. Six. That's Randall. Schick Snyder gets the kickoff. It's a good one over his head. It bounces. He picks it up at the 22, reverses his field, breaks a couple of tackles, and he is going to be bottled up at the 32-yard line. So Schick Snyder showed that he had a boot there. Kicked it over his head. Good job there by Randall fielding it, staying composed, turning up the field, and getting a nice return. We'll keep it here for the possession change. 7 nothing our score. De La Salle out in front. 9.49 to go in the opening quarter. Happy you're with us. You'll be watching this one on ESPN1003.com, Facebook, Twitter. A new wrinkle that we have. The technology of 2017. And I'm looking at the radar map, Ken, there's nothing on it. So there must just be some heat lightning out in the distance as there's no precipitation at all. We'll take it. Ball to 34, De La Salle plays first and 10. Gums hands it up the middle to Collins. He's got a big hole, but he falls down on his own fruition there. Looked to make a cut, and he just sort of tripped over his own feet out at the 41-yard line. Tarpons have caught a bit of a break there. He does get six yards on the run. They'll play a second and four. 9.25 and counting here. Three receivers out to the left side of the field. Gums fakes the handoff. Now throws a quick hitter that is caught by Randall. Boy, he plugged that thing right off the turf. That's a good grab and a first down out to the 48-yard line. Scoop that one right off the top of his shoes. Yep, that was a one whale of a catch there. It was thrown short. If they would have let him in stride, he could have had some room to run, but he spent all his energy catching it. He fell to the turf. Clock will be inside of nine minutes in the opening half when this ball is snapped. The ball is at the 48-yard line of De La Salle. They're trying to add to a 7 nothing lead. Ball right around the middle of the field. Hands it up the middle to Collins, looking for room. He's juking around, getting some good yardage, breaking out of the pack now, and gets a first down out to the 39-yard line. Boy, he's he's slippery. It feels like you're going to tackle him for a gain of a couple, and then he gets out of there, and there he picked up 12. Uh, into South Lafouche territory at the 39-yard uh, line. Ball on the left side of the field, left hash. 
De La Salle now going left to right with the possession change at the end of the quarter. 8.30 and ticking. They play a first and 10. Three receiver shotgun set. Gums drop back to pass. Has a lot of time. Shoots it to the middle. The field is picked off. Intercepted by number 17. He's taking it up the field. 40, 45. He's hit hard and wrestled out of bounds. That is number 17, Jake Pete. And boy, the Tarpons defense needed to make a play, and they did so there. Absolutely ball overthrown. Too high, too deep. Jake Pete got the football and then uh, brought it in and moved the ball upfield. Good return. He's out to about the 42-yard line. As Ken said, they threw a slant and he just overshot the receiver. Jake Pete was playing safety. It floated right into his hands. Now let's see if the Tarpons can make it hurt on the scoreboard. The White Hat official is going to talk to Coach Forsyth here. I'm not sure about what, but we do have a temporary pause in play. First turnover of the game. Let's see. Whatever they were talking about, it has broken up here. As the official is making his way back out onto the field. Yep, first down, first and 10. There we go. Tarpons are gonna have the ball on the right hash. Three receivers will be to the strong side of the field, which is to the left. One receiver out to the weak side of the field. That is number 11, Blanchard, the guy who just made the, or excuse me, a Petrie had the interception. Blanchard is out at receiver. No one with Baya in the backfield. He gets a snap, straight drop, throws it out to Allen, catches the football and gets a good seven, eight yards. That is, that's a tough play to stop. Allen was out in the slot, caught it near the line of scrimmage and got up the field. Kind of giving uh, De La Salle a little bit of a small dose of their own medicine. Yep. Ball spotted at the 48 yard line. Tarpons will be playing a second and four. Same formation, five receivers, no one in the backfield with Baya. Ball still in the right hash. Now Allen comes in motion. They fake it to him on a sweep. Baya goes to the middle and maybe gets to the line of scrimmage. Good penetration there by De La Salle. And I'll bring up a third and four for the Tarps. Yeah, he gained about a half yard there. It was on the 48, now it's on the 48 and a half. Pretty stout group up front for uh, for De La Salle on Those defense. Some big boys. But, but no small guys on the Tarpons offensive line. Give him a good push, fella. Maybe got a couple of snaps to get it here. Near midfield, middle of the second quarter. Two guys on the side of Baya in the backfield. Gets the snap, hands it up the middle to Allen. He's across the 50, still driving, and he's around the marker. It's going to be awfully close. It's going to be awfully close. Let's see where they spot him. They're spotting it across the 50 at about the 48 and a half. Mm. And they're going to measure this. Let's see. They're going to bring the chains out. And looking at where the chain is positioned, let me tell you, this is going to be a matter of inches. We talked about it being four down territory. You get this close and don't convert, I think that'll make the decision a little easier as the chain gang is out onto the field. Here's the stretch, and good. it's a first down, there a Golden go. Motors first down for the Tarps. Got it by about half of the football. Now Tarpons are hitting them with a little dose of their own medicine. They're coming with some tempo here. Nope, they're gonna get it back into the huddle. They were just rush, rushing some personnel onto the field. Inside of seven minutes here in the opening half, De La Salle scored on their second possession. Tarpons just got an interception and they're looking to convert here. They're across the 50 at the 48 yard line. Four receivers, two to each side. The ball's on the right hash. Baya joined by Allen in the backfield. Gets the snap, it's a counter to Allen, looking for room. He's fighting, gets across the 45 to about the 44. Allen the ball. See an update uh, 
With 11.56 left in the first half, Vanderbilt Catholic 17, Thibodeau High School nothing. I've been telling everybody all off season that Vanderbilt team is one whale of a team. Uh, Robeson scored a uh, one yard touchdown. Here we play a second and six, ball at the 44 yard line. Four receivers. Bayou and a pistol. It's a snap handed up the middle. I think that's to Rogers. And they're going to rule him down. He thought he was still on his feet, but they're going to mark him down at about the 42 or 43. Gained a couple. And is this a humidity break? <laughs> sure enough, heat and humidity break. We'll be back in a minute. 7 nothing. De La Salle out in front. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. objective diagnosis and safer return to play so play hard play to win but play it safe with sports medicine center stand by coming to and on third and four by a hands it to allen on a stretch he's got a first down and more out across the 35 to the 32 that's a golden motors first down and boy those boys up front jai ogeron chad Sheremy, talon schicks not daniel dickinson gavin zarang pat yourself on the back they just got a big push there for the first down Certainly in that situation, got the better of the guys up front for, for De La Salle. Tell you one thing the Tarpons are doing tonight, they're very methodical. They're eating up that clock, limiting the possessions in this game. I think a lot of people would consider the Tarpons probably to be an underdog in this one. That's a good way to try to fight the beast, limit the possessions in the game. Play a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Play clock down to one, and let's see, did they get the timeout? I think Coach Forsythe did get the timeout. So that'll be the first timeout for either team here in the half, and we'll keep it right here as we just had a break. I think, I think Coach was trying to uh, make a little change the last uh, 10 seconds or so, or, or yelling to him, hey, hurry up and run the play. And it, it didn't work out, but he caught it in time. Look, we talked about this in both the Jamboree and the pregame. Coach Forsythe is 26 years old. This is his first rodeo, literally. The organization we're seeing is really pretty nice. There's not a lot of confusion. Everybody's in control of what they're doing. That's really impressive to see from a first-year guy. Absolutely. 26 years old. Yeah. I, I have shoes that are older than that. This and is and certainly, as the old saying goes, I have ties older than that. The first <laughs> year of uh, – this is the first time in the history of the school that the head football coach is younger than I am, making me feel old. <sighs> Here we go, after the timeout, 5.05 to go in the half. Tarpon's looking to maybe tie it here. It's 7-0 De La Salle. They play a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Bayo with a couple of guys in the backfield with him. Hands it to Rogers. No, he keeps it, and it's going to be an option sweep to Allen, who's met. Lost the yard on that one. Pitched it at the right time. It was an accurate pitch. There were just three or four De La Salle defenders there waiting. And they'll work off of that, what uh, De La Salle just did. Yep. Jake Gouser checks in. Jeremy Rogers takes a break. I would not like to be Jeremy Rogers at the end of a game. Ooh. That boy must be sore. He plays just about every snap. Second and 11, 430 and counting in the opening half. Tarpons are 33 yards away from pay dirt. I see Kane in at receiver. That's another guy going both ways. By a... Straight drop, throws it deep down the field, looking for Kane, and it is batted. There is a flag on the I field. I think that's a face guarding, perhaps. As the ball fell on the turf near the pylon, there was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and the flag came in. It's going to be interference on somebody. We're getting the signal. I don't know who it's going to be on. 
and it's on Demarcus Kane. Oh my goodness. So it's offensive interference, maybe at the last minute there to try to protect the interception, he might have grabbed hold. And that's a call you don't see very often. Now it's interesting what was De La Salle want to do here is they could play a third and 11 if they would choose, or they could back him up 10, 15 yards and make it second and really long. And they're backing him up. Because I don't remember seeing the defender turn around and his hand was in uh, Kane's face. Yeah, that was, that was a questionable one there. There was not much contact there for it to be an offensive interference. But the ball is now back at the 48-yard line of the Cavaliers. Tarpon's got to get inside the 25, so they've got a world to go here. But got a couple plays, just get it a little bit at a time. Play clock is running, game clock is running. 409 and counting. Baya. And the, yeah, the game clock should not have been running. The White Hat official sees that and stops it. And they're going to add a little time. I think they're going to put it back up to 412. Yeah, after a penalty and an incompletion, the clock shouldn't have been no. moving. Let's see what the Tarpons come with here. You saw that wrinkle we spotted out right away that Kane was in the game. They went straight to him on the fly pattern, nearly hit it. Ball was maybe a little underthrown. And here's an update, uh, end of the first quarter. E.D. White Catholic, 14, Central Lafouche, nothing. Wow. Cardinals off to a good start. Second along, Baya fakes a handoff to Allen. Straight drop, has time, shoots it deep down the field. And it is, did he catch it? I think that's picked off. Yeah, that's caught by the defender there. Number 24, Quincy Thomas. So if for nothing else on second and long, that plays out like a punt. It was a deep pass down the field. Quincy Thomas was met right as he caught the football. I didn't know if he hung on to it, but he sure did. Out at around the 18-yard line. So the Tarbons have a promising drive there that goes for naught. And let's see what De La Salle could do in the final four minutes of the half. And the thing for South Lafouche right now is, is hang tough, play good defense, don't let them score, and uh, yep. take that second half kickoff. Amen. Gums, out of the gun, ball in the left hash, straight drop, being pressured a little bit, throws it deep down the field, and boy, they've got a man wide open. He catches that, it's Marquis. He is out across the 50, reverses his field. He's tripped up at the 32-yard line. Tarpons were playing press coverage, and Marquis got behind the, de the defense there, and they get a big play. But again, a terrific throw by the QB. That was one of those where the receiver didn't even need to slow down, which is exactly what you want to see. About a 51-yard uh, pass play. They're inside of Tarpon territory to the 32. Now suddenly the clock isn't as much of an issue, 347. And it'll start on the official's whistle. Here it is, first and 10. Gums with no one joining him in the backfield. It's a straight quarterback draw, bounces outside, breaks a tackle out across the 30, and he's going to maybe get into the end zone here. He's still fighting, and he will score. Julian Gums, once he got outside, I knew he had a chance, and he broke that final tarpon tackle to get into the end zone. So De La Salle, two plays, about 82 yards, and they take a 13 to nothing lead pending the extra point. That's just good downfield blocking that time by De La Salle. You talked last week, Ken, about reading the blockers. Gums did an excellent job there following his guys down the field. Now the Cavaliers will have Friend, or Finn Labresh in a lefty kick. You don't see too many of those. What, someone named Finn? Yeah. <laughs> Snap is down, <laughs> kick is up. It is true. <laughs> so with 3.30 to go in the opening half, De La Salle leads South Lafouche 14 nothing. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans.
Tarpons have Rodgers and Allen waiting for the kick. It is kicked deep down the field. Rodgers will feel at about the six-yard line out across the 20, going to the middle of the field, gets across the 25-yard line to about the 26, and the Tarpons will play first and 10 there. 321, Tarpons could possibly get a score here, get the ball to start the second half as well. They have moved the football, they just haven't finished drives so far in this game. They've been across the 50 yard line a couple of times. Ball is to the left of center. Four receiver set, two receivers to each side of the field. Bayou joined by Allen in the backfield out of the gun. Straight drop, quick hitter to Jelby Sheremy. He is bottled up. Big hit by number eight, Noble Scott, but Jelby did catch it and hang on. He gained about three or four on the play. Old double deuce, as my man Jimmy Sheremy calls him, his father. Jelby did have to pay a price for that one, but that was a big hit. Second and six. Clock continues to run inside of three minutes. By a straight drop, swing pass to Allen, looking for room across the 30, breaks a tackle, and he's pushed out of bounds around the 35-yard line near the first down marker, actually. I'm going to rule him out right at the 35, so it'll be third and one for the Tarps. Oh, this is a big play because you do not want to give them the football back here, especially with the explosive that no. they showed. This is where you ask your big offensive lineman, get us a push. Let's let us get a yard here. Shotgun set by a straight drop. Fakes it to Allen. Now throws it. Oh, out to Gougery. Couldn't quite hold on in the middle of the field. Falls to the turf. It'll be fourth and one. Good play design. They had showed that swing pass a couple times. It opened up the middle of the field. Jake just couldn't quite hold on to it. Just off his fingertips and fell incomplete. And the first big decision, I guess, of the game for Coach Forsythe, it looks like they're staying on the field here, fourth and one with a heavy package. I see number four, Drake Billiot going in there. Need a yard. Try to draw him offside and just go with a quick dive. Well, they got to move. Play clock's down to five. Baya hands it to Allen, and, boy, he lost yardage. He did not get it. He is going to be bottled up at the 34. De La Salle will take over and play first and ten there with 2.28 to go in the half. They rolled the dice, tried to get a spark, and came up empty, and now De La Salle is going to be in prime position to potentially add to their lead. You can see they've watched some film. They knew what was coming there. Now the Cavaliers have all three timeouts and 228 to work with. They've only got to go 34 yards. And Gums. And good field position. Straight drop. Swing pass out to Marquis. Looking for room. Still looking for room. That a boy, Jake. Jake makes a good open field tackle. Keeps him to a gain of only about a yard or so. You can say he, he stuck his hat right in there. There we go. Gained exactly a yard on the play. Clock will run inside of two minutes here before the next snap. And it goes to two minutes now. Second and nine, Gums. Three receivers to the left, balls on the right hash. Hands it up the middle, looking for room as Collins, and good gang tackling there by the Tarps, limiting him to gain a maybe two. Clock will continue to run now. Gausser in there, uh, Drake Billiot in there, among others. 138 and ticking. It'll be third and about seven for De La Salle. Now 90 seconds and ticking. They do have all three timeouts. Big play here for the big blue defense. Gums, ball still in the right hash. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. See the Tarpons get a little pressure here. Straight drop, looking down the field, has time. Shoots it towards the end zone. It's a jump ball, that is. Did he catch it? Oh my goodness. That is gonna be caught for a touchdown by B.J. Randall. And for anybody who's watching us on ESPN1003.com, you just saw one whale of a play. It was a jump ball situation. Both guys had position and he just plucked it out of the air for the score. 
That's the second time today he struck. That Randall kid is one heck of a player. Wow. Now 103 to go in the half. De La Salle leads 20 to nothing. There's a flag on the play before the extra point. Let's see if maybe one of the teams has 12. Dead ball substitution on the Tarpons. The Tarps had 12. Can you ask your defensive backs to be in position? There they were. That was just young man Randall made a better play. That was just a, another one of those perfectly thrown yep. footballs. You got to go for two. Uh, I see them shuffling around out there. They've made the extra points with ease, but they are moving the football up to the one and a half yard line to try it here. Play clock has started. The Tarpons are hustling their defense out onto the field. Looks like they're going to get everyone off on time. So De La Salle trying to get a little greedy, trying to get that extra point here. Ball at the one and a half yard line. Gums is going to take it. It's a keeper all the way. He's met. He's fighting for extra yardage, and he did get across. But let me tell you, he got that all on his own. He was hit at about the two yard line and drug himself forward into the end zone to make it 22 to nothing with a minute and three to go in the half. Man, oh man, you gamble, go for it in your own territory, don't convert, and De La Salle makes you pay. And they open up a pretty sizable lead here late in the first half. And we won't go into hindsight right now because that won't pay us anything. Yeah, no doubt. You just don't know. You needed to get a spark. You can understand the, the argument for trying for it. That's the difficult thing about being a coach. You and I have both been in those shoes. Sometimes you just, you know, like playing blackjack, you can hit it and it still may not end up working out for you. And those you hit 22. <laughs> 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 Happens to me fairly often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, have, you have 14, you have 14 and you're drawing eight. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, still some time on the clock and a couple of timeouts to boot, 103 on the old kicker. It's Allen and Rogers back deep. They're both around the 10 yard line. De La Salle is number 19, Finn LaBresche doing the kicking duties. This is a senior heavy team looking at that roster. Ball is placed, the kick is high in the air, will be fielded by Rogers around the eight yard line in the middle of the field. Out across the 20, and he's wrestled down at the 21 yard line. Tarpon coaching staff to our left. They were very excited about the potential for that return there, but De La Salle bottled it up pretty quickly. And let's see what the Tarps come with here. Got to go 79 yards, and they don't have very much time to do it. Looks like it's going to be three receivers to the right. The ball is on the left hash. Trips to the right, strong side of the field. Bayou and Allen in the backfield. Brock, he keeps it up the middle. He's fighting forward, doesn't get very much, maybe a yard. De La Salle's not showing that they're going to call a timeout. They seem to be content to go to the lockers. The Tarpons are not in a hurry. They seem content to go to the lockers as well. 34 seconds and ticking. They don't have to snap the football until there's about 13 seconds left on the game clock. Second and eight, ball at the 21 yard line. Bayou sends Jeremy in motion. Option, pitches a talent, ball's fumbled and Corbin jumps on top of it. Tarpons get away with it there. That could have been very, very bad. As now De La Salle will call a timeout with seven seconds left. And they were trying to get that timeout sooner. They may add a little time here. And Corbin did the right thing. The, uh, just fall on just it. Just fall on the football. Don't try to pick it up and turn uh, an unfortunate situation in the, into something much worse. And they are going to add time. I, the, the head coach was calling for it. The clock stopped a little late. There's going to be 10 seconds left in the half. Tarpons will be playing a third and very long. They're going to be at the 13-yard line. They've got to get out across the 30. I guess the big thing here, you don't want to turn it over. 
De La Salle is calling some timeouts. They're trying to force the Tarpons to punt the football. The official's still trying to get his cues to the clock, man. I don't know that they're aware that they're trying to add some time here. As I said, it shows seven seconds. Yeah, he was very clearly pointing the old 1-0. One 1-0. Zero. One zero. Put 10 seconds on the clock, please. Now they just added 14, 14, so I guess they could run it down to one 10. 1-0. <laughs> there, there we got go. it. Third time's a charm. So by my math, De La Salle should still have two timeouts. I believe that's the first one that they've called in the half. So assuming that the Tarpons are hit in bounds here, they'll probably call another one. Baya is going to have the ball on the left hash. Two receivers to the strong side of the field, two receivers to the weak side of the field. It'll be a pistol with Allen. Third and long here. Gets the snap, hands it up the middle to Corbin, looking for room, gets a yard or two. And De La Salle's going to call a timeout right away with six seconds on the clock. So now you got to protect your punter here because you got to figure that they're coming on a block. Ball is at the 15 yard line. Yes, yeah, six seconds left. Hmm. You figure if they get off the punt successfully, that alone will take six seconds. Should be right about that number. Be tempted to maybe just tell my kicker, if you catch it clean, just boot that sucker out of bounds. Kill the half. Getting some instructions. Boy, De La Salle's got a nice sideline operation. They got a tent set up out there. They're watching the film on the big, big screen TV. It's amazing how that works. Yep. We talked in the pregame, they're one of the top teams in 3A, and we've seen that here, especially in the second quarter. Tarpons have Schick Snyder in the punt. It. They got some big hog mollies there protecting them, creating a wall. And they're coming on what looks to be an all out block because they don't even have a guy back deep. You got to hold up here. See if you could just take one step and punt it. Yep. Oh, they were offsides. They were offsides. They get the kick off. There is no whistle for offsides. And that will be the end of the first half. I think De La Salle got away with one. But anyway, our halftime score, Cavaliers 22, South Lafouge 0. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. We'll be right back in three minutes after this quick timeout. Germs don't take the weekend off, and neither do we. Get your flu shot on your schedule at Total Urgent Care. Open seven days a week, including evenings and weekends, with no appointments or long wait times. Total Urgent Care is conveniently located in Cutoff on Highway 3162 in front of Walmart. Let Total Urgent Care help you and your family stay healthy this flu season. Get your flu shot at Total
available on all consumer and commercial checking account holders. Stop by any State Bank and Trust location for all the details. State Bank and Trust Company, Cajun Banking, served just the way you like it. Member FDIC. Joe Septic Contractors has specialized in the installation of sewage systems, steel drains, and vacuum truck services for over 40 years. they have grown into one of the Good. largest sanitation companies in Louisiana. Call Joe Septic Contractors today about their rentals on portable toilets, holding tanks, fine hand wash stations, and air-conditioned restroom trailers. Call Joe Septic Contractors today at 985-632-5592 or visit their website at www.joeseptic.com. Good luck to Mason Bujo, number 32. Go Colonels! Deciding when and how to retire is one of the most important financial decisions you'll ever make. Do you take a lump sum? Do you have to pay taxes on this money? How do you invest during retirement to make sure you don't outlive your income? What health insurance plans are available? With such an overwhelming number of questions... And got a feeling there might be a little football watched in in our two household here in the next couple of uh, days as you went out to the Thibodeau uh, Nichols game last night. LSU's got a big one tomorrow. Um, there's the most exciting time of the year is finally here. I heard uh, Matt Moscona call it the sporting Christmas, and I think that we're pretty much there right now. Oh, th very definitely. How long? <laughs> I mean, I was I was greatly uh, impressed by uh, Nichols last night, especially the second half. That was stunning. I don't know if there's going to be a replay somewhere that people can find, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, I know they play at A&M next week and then following uh, at home on the PM kickoff. View A&M and that, that uh, informed. Uh, Next Friday, I, I think that's what it was. But it was a great time to be on campus and, and a lot of good visiting, people uh, tailgating and, and and that type of thing. So it was a lot of fun. And then, of course, now breaking it down to uh, uh, the big game at 8.30 tomorrow evening with uh, We're going to sort of be paying more attention to the green wave. And someone who is a lot smarter than I am and, and keeps up on, I try to keep up on Nichols as much as possible, but told me how much improvement there is for Nichols men's basketball. Whew. Right Let me tell you something. That you, I mean, you're in, you're in the trenches there. Those guys are going to be able to play. They went out on a Bahama tour, uh, and they played. I know Coach Riley was kind of just looking forward to maybe winning a game, maybe competing. They won all three games on that tour. They've got a lot of really good players on that roster now. Complete turnover. They've got, you know, all some new names, some new faces. Look out for the Colonel basketball team. Look out for the Colonel ladies basketball team as well. Yeah. It's an exciting time to be a Colonel. A absolutely. H.L. Bourgeois 6. You can't keep the Gators down long. They struggled last year and they're off to a good start tonight. Got a couple more scoreboard updates. Ellender at halftime leading Terrebonne 12 to 10. E.D. White at halftime leading Central Lafouche 21 to 7. 
updating. I'm, I'm getting scores. The, the people around the area are listening. Adrian Rios heard me give that scoreboard update. Now he just sent Vanderbilt leading Thibodeau 24-7 to at the end of the first half. Covenant Christian leading Fisher 12-0 to at halftime. Let's see if I got another one here. West St. John leading St. James 6 nothing at the end of the first quarter. So all the reporters out there around the area are doing their due diligence, getting these scores, and we very, very much appreciate that. Let's take one final three-minute break. When we get back, we're going to have the second half between South Lafourche and De La Salle. Our score 22 nothing in favor of the Cavaliers. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans, ESPN1003.com, Facebook, Twitter, and the works. Tarpons will receive the second half kickoff. The teams have returned to the field, but they have not yet gotten between the white lines. It gives me some time to remind everyone this broadcast is sponsored by Chris Godet Insurance and Financial Services, Golden Motors, Thibodeau Regional Medical Center, South La La oh, excuse me, South Lafouche Bank, Advanced Eye Institute, Dufresne Building Materials, Jimmy T. Jim LaFont, candidate for Greater Lafouche Port Commission, Division E, Total Urgent Care, and Southern Pipeline Services. And Ken, I want to take a little time before play resumes. I don't know if my parents are listening. I want to thank them so very much. I've been sick this past week. They've taken very good care of me. I know I've been grumpy at times, mom and dad, but thanks so much for sticking with me. And I love you guys. And I'd like to, I'd like to wish a happy birthday to my, uh, my wife, Jennifer. I've been That's awesome. Luckily, man. I've been around for a lot of those birthdays. And she takes care, good care of me, and I'm grumpy all the time. <laughs> you and me both, my man. <laughs> De La Salle will be kicking left to right. Tarpons have Rodgers and Allen to field it. 24 minutes to go in week one, barring some type of overtime here, which the Tarpons right now would take. Labresh has been doing the kicking duties for the Cavs throughout the evening. And they boot it high in the air. Allen will field it at the 15. 
Work in the middle, out across the 20, looking for room 30, still fighting out across the 35-yard line. Good return for Corbin Allen, gets the tarp in some good field position to start the second half. Good push up front by the uh, Tarpons on the kick return team. Yep. Allen hit the hole there with a lot of promise. Got right to the 35-yard line where the Tarpons will play at first and 10. Ball's on the right hash. They will have trips receivers to the left on the strong side of the field. One receiver out to the right, which is Blanchard. Baya and Corbin Allen in a pistol. Baya gets snapped, hands it to Allen up the middle. He's fighting hard, maybe got a couple. Out across the 35 to maybe the 37 or so. We'll bring up about a second and eight or so for the Tarps. It's really been soft. It's been hard for South Lafouche to break through and pick up that 8, 10, 15, yeah. 20 yard and, and, and above. We were talking with Coach Brian Colley at halftime, and that was his assessment of De La Salle. He said they're just in the right position every time. You're not going to get them out of position very often. Second and eight, four receivers in the formation. Baya fakes it to Allen, looking to throw. It's a swing pass out to Gaujor, and he dropped it. Oh, my goodness. It was a little low, he lunged out, couldn't quite hold on to it, maybe anticipated some contact there, but he would have had a little room to run if he could have held on. It'll be third and eight now. Bayou tried to lay that out there, maybe a little bit too yeah. soft, but uh, it, it was a tough catch and didn't come through. Now the Tarpons will have another opportunity to convert on third down here. It'll be trips receivers to the right, which is the weak side of the field. Thibodeau is going to be the lone man on the strong side of the field to the left. Bayo waiting for the snap. He gets it, straight drop, looking for room in the middle, and he's bottled up. He didn't have any time to throw. It looked like the blocking design it may have been a draw there, but De La Salle was not fooled at all, and they tackle him around the original line of scrimmage. Looking at the sideline, the Tarpons are going to punt the football. That's the wise thing to yes. do. That's the wise thing to do. They're going to bring Sheck Snyder out onto the field. Oh, heck, Sheck Snyder's already on the field because he's the center. <laughs> 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 the big boy booming that ball down the oh field. Oh, my goodness. Tarpons do have time. Still 11 seconds on the play clock. Everyone is in position. The snap is perfect. The kick is off, and it's a good one by Schick Snyder. Fair catch called for and made at the 34-yard line by Randall. And De La Salle will take over right there. The Tarpons go three and out. The Cavaliers will look to add to their advantage here. And once again, good field position for De La Salle. Yep. Play a first and ten here. Cheerleaders are tossing some footballs, slingshotting some footballs, and let me tell you, I'm waiting when, for one. I was about to say, when you put that slingshot on it, it could reach up here. It's got some velocity to it. Speaking of velocity, Justin Verlander is an Astro, man. Talk about that in next idle time. First and 10. Straight drop, has plenty of time. Shoots it deep down the field. Oh, just off the outstretched arms of Ahmad Munoz, who dove for it. And that was one of the times today, Ken, where Gums wasn't as accurate as that one was a little bit too long. Munoz made an effort for it, but couldn't quite haul it in. It was a Verlander trade. Did anyone ask Kate Upton for her uh, opinion on the trade? Yeah. I, had I didn't think I knew that. That's huh? an interesting wrinkle there. <laughs> Some halftime scores from the Baton Rouge area include Ca Catholic 7, Parkview Baptist 6, and Zachary 7, North Shore 7. Second and 10. Three receivers out of the gun. Handed up the middle to Collins, looking for room. He's hit. Gets a yard or two, not much. Good job penetrating the middle there by the Tarpons nice. defense. Got to get off the field here. Third and seven, get that ball back to your offense. This is a big play. Clock inside of 10 minutes in the third quarter. De La Salle up three scores here, 22 to nothing. Also, Walker over Dutchtown, 14 to three, and Live Oak, seven, Woodlawn, nothing. Third and seven, ball in the left hash, trip receivers to the right. Got to watch Gum's legs here. He, he moves pretty well. Let's see if he tries to take off. Straight drop. Looking down the field, and he overshoots his receiver, Munoz, and the Tarpon defense holds. And barring an unexpected decision here, I think they'll be punting the football, and they are. So the Tarpons get a three and out, 
and they should be getting the ball back here. Good stand there by. How about this one? Warren Eastman, 40, Jesuit, 14. Wow. Well, Tarbins better hustle off the field. They're ready to punt it, and they're still running some guys off. They do get everyone off in time. Snap is a little low. Kicker has plenty of time, oh. and he puts a lot of air under it. Galjor gets away from it, lets it bounce. It'll roll inside the 20, be down at about the 19-yard line. So that was number 10, <laughs> Julian Gums, the quarterback. Jeez. Just there's a flag on the play. We'll see what that is. But, boy, Gums does just about everything except sell nachos there. That was a beautiful punt. That was up in the, well, I would say up in the clouds. <laughs> Halftime, Plaquemine 21, East St. John 7. Tell you, after all the drama around the Southern Lab situation, boy, they got whooped last night. That was a surprising, well, I guess not so surprising given the turmoil around that program, but yeah. boy, they got it put on them last night. LHSA has really been cracking down. Southern Lab getting in some hot water. West Monroe got in some hot water in the off season. Here, we're deliberating here, trying to see what this flag was. The flag was thrown around midfield. They're having a conference. They've been meeting about it for quite some time. We don't have an indication on which side it is on just yet. Taking a long time, you're right. Usually, even when they're deliberating, we sort of have a, an idea of who it's on. Right now, both teams are staying put. As it stands now, the Tarpons would have the ball just inside of the 20-yard line, but it's going to be moving in one direction or another pending this violation. Still talking it over. The clock reads 9.09 in the third quarter. And Casey, you, you mentioned the uh, Major League Baseball. Oh. This is on the Tarpons. It's illegal touching, perhaps? I, I put his hands on his head. Should be a legal man downfield, but... That's hard to understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how they can have an illegal man. Okay. Too many men in on the field. Now they're bringing the ball back this way. Legal participation on the tarps. Are they going to re-kick this? And if this is a 10-yard penalty, it may be a first down. Oh, my goodness. It was fourth and eight. And they're going to, yeah, the Tarpons defense is going on the field. This is going to be a Dale LaSalle first down. I don't know what they did. But this is going to be a 15-yard penalty and a first down. The only thing I could see is illegal participation. Maybe someone lost a helmet, should have left that the game, be. Denton. Wow. But it'll be a first and 10 for the Cavaliers. Boy, that's a naughty break there. You got them stopped. And on the punt, you have a penalty that allows De La Salle to keep the drive going now across midfield. Gums waiting for the snap. He gets it. He juggles it a little bit. Now straight drop. Throws it deep down the field. There is some coverage there, and he overthrows everybody. But good job there by the Tarpon defense. He has a heck of an arm. Now he overthrew his receiver by at least five yards. But Tarpon's had Kane. Or excuse me, that's Marquise Francis, and then also number 17, Jake Pete out there. Pete got his paws on one earlier. Mm -hmm. He picked one off earlier in the ball game. It'll be second and 10 for De La Salle. Clock will be inside of nine minutes when it's next snap. Ball's on the left hash. Tarpons had him stop. There was a penalty on a punting play that allowed De La Salle to keep it. Let's see if they could stop him again. This is going to be a direct snap to Collins, Ken. He's, he's the quarterback on this play. He's the old Wildcat look. They snap it to Collins, looking for some room in the middle. He's fighting, running his blockers, spinning, and he's got some room. Out across the 40 to about the 35, inside the 35, still on his feet, out Jeez. across the 30 to the 26-yard line. They thought they had him wrapped up. He just kept his legs going, and after contact, he gained another 10 or 12 uh, that's yards. That's a great call by the uh, coaching staff. 
Oh, what a player. On the pass play, Gums looked to be stretching his back, looked a little shooken up. They just said, you know what, we'll go straight to Collins, did the old Wildcat snap, and he got some big yardage out to the 25-yard line. Be first and 10. Yeah, why not? Gums is back into the game now. I don't know that he left on the last play, but he certainly wasn't under center. Shotgun look. He hands it up the middle. They get a push there. Collins fighting forward. Still on his feet, but I think his knee had touched the yeah, ground. Better on 21. This is high praise, uh, certainly, but this guy's an NFL Hall of Famer. But he reminds me a little Curtis Martin in that even when you think he's down, he'll still get that extra yard or two after contact. But he also may be battling some cramps as Collins is limping off the field. You, you mentioned NFL. If you don't think that game at, at Nichols last night was important, uh, reports got back to me that Ryan Clark was at the game. Wow. That's awesome. Second and seven for De La Salle. Straight drop for Gums. There's a little hook pattern. It's caught by number 17, Marquez. He's hit around the 15 and driven back. So he gets a good five yards on the play, but the Tarpons do a good job making a quick tackle. Short of the first down. 7.30 and counting here. De La Salle leading 22-0, and they are now in the red zone with a third and short opportunity. Yeah, Collins looked to be favoring his ankle or something like that, and he has not come back in the game since. Now they have number 21, Ryan Hamrick, in at tailback. Let's see if they go to him here, third and one. Tarburns with a heavy defensive package trying to bottle the middle. They're anticipating a run here. There's the snap. They hand it to the tailback, and he is going to be smashed. He didn't get it. And let me tell you there, Hamrick, didn't know whether the run was left or right. He kind of <laughs> was confused. I think so. <laughs> and the Tarpons bottled him up very quickly. That's for a loss. And it'll be fourth and about three or four now. My friend Lori Lyons uh, put out West St. John. I, I'm assuming WSJ is West St. Yeah. John over St. James, 27 to 12. Wow. I was reading a story in NOLA.com. West St. John was one of the teams to beat in their classification. Here we go, fourth and three, and the Tarpons jump. First down, De La Salle. Gums got him with the hard count, and the entire defensive line bit. And that's a free five yards and a free first down. Perfect time to try it. It's a fundamental error by the Tarps. Keeps the drive alive. You always see a little more of those when you're fatigued. And Tarpon defense has been on the field a lot tonight. Have to concentrate. Balls at the 13, first and 10. Gums hands it to Hamrick, fighting for yardage in the middle, still driving across the five and near the goal line. It'll be first and goal, I believe he's got the first down. Yeah, it's right around the marker there. Yep, it'll be first and goal for the Cavaliers. Ball's around the two-yard line. I think these, the Cavaliers are starting on offense, starting to wear down the Tarpons on defense a bit. That is the one thing about this Tarpon team. They don't quite have the numbers that they're used to. They're dressing a lot of guys, but as was they're dressing a lot of the underclassmen players. And that defense does look a little winded. We're exactly halfway through the third quarter. First and goal for De La Salle. He'll hand it up the middle. No, the quarterback keeps it outside, and he walks into the end zone. Good decision there. Julian Gums on the two-yard touchdown scamper to make it 28 to nothing, pending the extra point. Good fake. I thought he was going to hammer. He bounced outside, and he had nothing but grass for the score. 5.53 to go in the third quarter. De La Salle jumps out in front, 28 nothing, pending an extra point try from Finn Labresh. Waiting for the snap. It's down. The kick is up, and it is true. So midway through the third quarter, De La Salle leads 29-0. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. We'll be right back after this one-minute break. Where opportunities are created, not waited on. That's the Dan Aust difference. I've, I've been here for 23 years. The Five opportunity yards, for advancement within Dan Aust was pretty evident early on in my career.
humidity break during the, the change of possession break, so the teams are not yet back out on the field. I, I, I wish I had someone to follow you around with the camera tomorrow because LSU football informs me that it's been 243 days without football. <laughs> Man, <laughs> we're starved for it. We're starved for it. And look, there's so much intrigue, Ken, because years and years and years of the Les Miles closed up offense. Tomorrow fans have been wanting the spread. They're going to get the spread tomorrow for better or for worse. I'm, I'm thinking that Matt Canada might have a pretty big night tomorrow. Oof. I sure hope ho for his sake he better hope so, because if not, the fans are going to turn on him pretty quick. The teams have returned to play here. I don't know if you follow much on Twitter, but I'm seeing some, some interesting uh, – quotes from one Ezekiel Elliott about his situation. I have some thoughts on that. They're unpopular thoughts because I'm a Cowboys fan, which is unpopular here in Louisiana. <laughs> but I, I just have a hard time thinking that if the justice system says you're good, how could your boss say you're not? But I don't know. Don't put yourself in a bad situation. None of this would happen, I guess. Might be a good idea. Here we go. Tarpons have Rodgers and Allen back to receive the kick. It is the usual culprit, LaBresh, booting it high in the air, and they were offsides. Almost the entire coverage team there was well ahead of the kicker, so they'll move that one back five yards. Monday morning quarterback says Ezekiel Elliott's lawsuit claims an NFL conspiracy against him. I don't know about all that. But I do think it's interesting that the reports are that the lead investigator recommended to Goodell no suspension, and then he comes back with a six-game suspension. Uh, I don't know. If you have someone that you trust that tells you to do something and you do the opposite, it does kind of look a little fishy. Yeah. A and I'm a little bit surprised by that because I, yeah. I thought and still believe Jerry Jones has a lot of influence. Yeah. A lot of influence. The appeal decision will come on Monday, yeah. so we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Labresh now with the ball at the 35-yard line after the offsides penalty. And they were all offsides. Let's see if they could get clean here. They do. It's kicked high down the field. Rodgers will field it at the 15-yard line. Work in the middle, 25. He is hit, and he loses the football, and De La Salle's got it. I think they've got it at least. They were certainly more white shirts in the scrum than blue. Yep, they got it. Rodgers was hit hard in the chest there. The ball came popping straight up in the air, and all the Cavaliers say that it's their ball. The referee hasn't given a signal yet, but it is indeed Cavalier football. He, t he took a licking on that one. They had a good kick return penetration there, De La Salle did, and they put a helmet on his chest. And now the Cavs will take over at the 29-yard line of South Lafouche. 28-yard line. Your old partner, Tommy Plazons, used to say you got to play for pride. Right here is one of those times. True. Got to keep working. It's week one. You could get better in every aspect. Gums will have shotgun. Ball in the left hash. Two receivers to each side. Man in motion. It'll be a sweep to the right side, looking for some room. Breaks a tackle across the 30, and he gets to near the 25-yard line. That was, let's see the number. Oh, some pushing and shoving after the play. No flags. But that was number 15, Jahiron Gilmore on the sweep. They got a paw on him behind the line of scrimmage, but he kept his balance, kept going forward, and got about two or three yards on the run. It'll be second and seven. Ball now on the right hash. Gums again with two receivers on each side. Still no Collins. Is Walked out with an apparent ankle injury a minute ago. Gums hands it up the middle to Johnson, fighting for room in the middle, gets a first down out to the 17 or 16-yard line. And it's one of those situations right now, Ken, they're getting such a push up front. It doesn't much matter who they have in the backfield. They're going to get some yardage. Yeah, they're knocking the Tarpons off the line of scrimmage. And, and I think also there's a, a good job of uh, ball handling yeah. by the QB, no matter who's in there. So they're in the red zone again. It'll play first and 10 at the 17-yard line, 445 and counting here in the third quarter. Being very deliberate. They were going with some tempo early, but now at the big lead, they're staying back. Play clock 
down to seven there on the line of scrimmage. Poor receiver shotgun look. Gums gets the snap. It's a wide snap, but he hands it off to the tailback Hamrick, who gains a yard or two inside the 15. He's dropped there by number eight. Oh, there is no number eight. I, I don't know. Number six is the guy I saw, Shane Billy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Big boys up front are still working, trying to get a stop here. It's going to be second and eight for De La Salle. Gums. Ball closer to the middle of the field, but still toward the right side of the hash. Gets the snap, straight drop. There's that hook pattern. It's hit right as he catches it and drops. Good open field tackle there by Demarcus Kane. Nicely done. The reception by Ivan Paz. Only gained a couple. The ball's now near the 10 yard line. It'll be third and about four for De La Salle. And they're going to a heavy set. As two small guys go out, two big guys come in. How about this one, uh, late in the first quarter. I think that's Utah State over Wisconsin, 10 to nothing. Wow. Wisconsin in at number nine to start this at the start this season. After what they did to LSU to open last year, it served them right. <laughs> <laughs> Third and four, the play clock winding down, and they're going to try for a timeout. Let's see if they got it in time. There's a flag on the field, but the line judge may have given him his timeout. Yep, he did. They got it before the play clock bled down. So with 3:01 to go. In the third quarter, De La Salle gets a timeout, their first of the half, and it'll allow me to thank some sponsors here if we could pull out the old sheet, which is courtesy of Joey D out in the studio. Let's see, we want to thank Lady of the Sea General Hospital, State Bank and Trust Company banking you could count on, LaFouche Motors, before you buy, give LaFouche Ford Lincoln a try, Joe Septic Contractors, your largest portable sewage and sanitation company, Danos, Vision Communications, Frank Supermarket, State Senator Gary Smith, and Dean Blanchard Seafood. Oh, it's a tough economic time down the by, but for those folks to pitch in, allow us Absolutely. to be here. We're very appreciative of that. It'll be third and four. De La Salle needs to get around the five-yard line here. Their kicker has looked pretty impressive. He could reach from here it, should they not convert and they decide to kick. Gums will have a couple of tackles in there. It's an unbalanced line. See big number 57, Jeremiah James, is lined up at tight end, but he's no tight end. He's some north of 250 <laughs> out there. <laughs> Third and four. Gets the snap, straight drop, throws the old fade pattern, and it is batted away. Good coverage by Marquise Francis. They were trying to get B.J. Randall, but Francis was on him like a blanket. <laughs> he looked like he was trying to smack a volleyball back over the net. Nice job. Tarpon's defensive backs have had some bad results, but they've been in good position for the most part tonight. De La Salle receivers have just made some nice plays. But as we said, they are going to try the field goal. It'll be... Yeah, what, about a 27-yarder? Finn Labresh. We told you in pregame he was booming him from about the 30-yard line, so he's going to have the leg. Snap is down. Kick is up. And it is true right down the middle. So De La Salle will add three points to their lead. They're now up 32 to nothing. 2.49 to go in the third quarter. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans.
2.49 to go in the third quarter. South Lafourche will be receiving a kickoff after the 27-yard field goal from Finn LaPresse. Tarpons have a little switch up there in their return, man. It is now going to be Shelby Sheremy, number 22, and number 11, Jack Blanchard, back deep. They're giving Allen and Rogers a break here on this one. Letting some other guys touch the football. The kick is high in the air. Blanchard will field it around the 10, juggles the catch. Looking for some room out across the 20, out across the 30, and he's tripped up there. And they have an injured tarp in there. Shane Billy out went down really as soon as the ball was caught without contact. So we certainly hope that that's just a cramp, but he looks to be in a lot of pain sitting on the turf. Really as soon as the return happened, he went down. And they are working the old calf, so this may have been a little overheating. Injury timeouts brought to you by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. Dr. Plaisance would call, would call for the pickle juice at this time. Yep. <laughs> Ryan Barbier, the South Lafouche trainer, he's a good one. He's Absolutely. done a very good job since coming over here about a year or so ago. Let's do this. Let's got a little opportunity here with the injury break. Let's give you the coaching staff here for the South Lafouche Fighting Tarpons this year. As we talked about in pregame, Blake Forsyth, first-year head coach. The assistant coaches this season are as follows. Tommy Boudreaux working with the offensive line. Justin Gauzer are working with some of the offensive guys. Daniel Gospire, Tommy Gisflair, Chandler Guitros, Scott Pellegram, Keegan Pokey, Scott Sanimo, and Brody Williams, and, of course, Ryan Barbier, the trainer. So those are your coaches for the South Lafouche Fighting Tarpons this season. They're still working on Shane Billiot. He is down on the turf. They've got to think it's a cramping situation. They're stretching him out. They brought him a water bottle. We're fortunate that uh, those non-contact injuries sometimes are the worst ones, so we seem to maybe have dodged a bullet here with this one. We hope he's going to be okay. The return went out to the 31-yard line. Give me a chance to maybe read a score or two while they're working on Billy Ott. West St. John 27, St. James 12 at the half. South Terrebonne 14, H.L. Bourgeois 6 at the half. Vanderbilt and Thibodeau still 24-7 at half. Good night for football locally. And, Ken, after the week we've had weather-wise, I think that we've kind of gotten away with one here. It's clear. It's pretty dry. It's very humid. But I guess what can you expect for September the 1st? We've been through that. And Absolutely. those poor people in Texas, man, they just you are going through the ringer. As I remember you and I were on air last Friday, and you sort of tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, man, Harvey's a Category 4 now. He made landfall, and – didn't do anything after that, just kind of stayed there for a couple of days. And, and, and that's the problem, is that it stalled. That shows, you know, the it's a time in the country where everybody's so divided. It shows the resiliency of people coming together, helping one another out. Uh, you hate to have a tragedy, but it does bring out the best in people, as we know all too well here in Louisiana. It, it also brings out the critics. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I look back at uh, – what Hurricane Juan did to, to us down here in, in 1985, and I saw that my residents in Galliano received, I think it was about 17.75 or 17.8 inches of rain. Unbelievable. Looking over into the distance out to our right, you see the Tarpon baseball diamond. It's a good time, I guess, to give a little love to Andrew Revalier, who's to our left here in the coach's box. He's actually not listed on our sheet, but he is a Tarpon assistant coach. Um, coach R uh, Rav is going to be first-year baseball coach. Nice. He's got some big plans, man. He's looking to do a lot of work to that baseball field, trying to elevate the infield, get some better drainage. So curious to see some of the things he could do there, returning one whale of a team this coming season. The thing about our region, they can say what they want. We have good academics and good athletics and whatever else is in between. Hey Amen. You know, just a lot of extras for the kids, too. They have Billy Ott out onto his feet. His legs are locking up. But that's that's good to see locker room-wise. Four or five Tarpons are running over there to try to help him off the field. A good job by those young men there having their teammates back. He's limping off. Looks to still be in some pain, so hopefully he's okay. Of course, that injury timeout brought to you by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. Yeah, get him hydrated, stretch that out. Yeah, there we go. They're going to carry him off, and we'll get back to play here. Tarpons will play a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. 
looking to get rid of that zero on the board. De La Salle leads 32 to nothing. Tarpon's looking to, if for nothing else, leave this game with a feel good feeling here. Bayo in the huddle with his men. Looks like there'll be two receivers to the right, which is the weak side of the field, one to the left. Allen is in the backfield in a pistol. Waiting for the snap. He gets it, hands it to Allen up the middle, looking for some room. He's got some room. Gets about five yards or so there out across the 35. It's about the 36 or 37 yard line. Good job, pick up about six there for Corbin. I know we talked about Nichols and McNeese. Those are two schools that are interested in the services of Mr. Allen beyond this good. season. You know, it was good to see, it. we talk a lot about some of the local colonels, but how about Big Marvell Bourgeois, who was playing for McNeese last night? That was great to see. Boy, he <laughs> he's a big he boy. Big, big is right. <laughs> he got some uh, good playing time there. Second and four, Baya hands it to Allen, looking for room, bounces outside. There's nothing there. He's going to be dropped for a loss of a yard or two near the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Yeah, there's quite a few Tarpons out there. I know Peyton Gidry playing for Northwestern State, Marvell at McNeese. Of course, Mason Boudreaux for the Colonels. Tarpons repping their alma mater proud. Third and about four and a half here, sorry, Ken. Oh, well, it's, it's good that, that Nichols has kind of changed the, what it had a few years ago with uh, Coach Rebo. Yeah. Showing a lot of interest in, in kids within, uh, what, 75, 100 miles of, of the campus. Baya completes that one to Thibodeau, a very short gain out about the 37, 38 yard line, maybe gain a yard or two. It was that quick hook play that De La Salle likes to use, but there the defensive back, number eight, Nobel Scott, closed very quickly. And the Tarpons are gonna bring the punt team out. But I think also with uh, Coach Re Rebo having so many contacts in the area, th that helps a lot, And but not afraid to bring in a, a, a JC transfer or transfer from another uh, four-year school. After the punt, I'll tell you a very interesting stat about that. As it's fourth and four here, Schick Snyder. Gets a good snap and kicks it down the field. Fair catch called for and dropped, but he gets back on top of it around the 27 yard line. So we promised you a nickel stat. The Colonels have 88 players from the state of Louisiana. Boy, that is not a number that you would have seen a couple of years ago. Coach Rebo said he wanted to recruit local and he certainly has done that. There's one minute on the ticker in the third quarter. De La Salle with the football at the 28-yard line, up 32 to nothing. Tarpons just punted it to him. It was perhaps clean jersey time for De La Salle, but I do still see gums out there. Perhaps some receivers out there that we haven't seen much of. For the Tarpons, the defense looks about the same. There we go, first and 10. Gums with three receivers to the right, which is the strong side of the field. Fakes the handoff, and oh, it's batted down at the line of scrimmage by number four, Drake Billiot. They did a fake and then like a quick slant, but Billiot was all over and batted that one to the, down, uh, to the turf. Be second and 10. Tried a little trickeration that time. You know, that's like a, like a hot read that they have is you could see the slot guy put his hand on his helmet before the snap, kind of cueing yeah. to the quarterback that it was there. So the Tarpons did a good job defending it. Ball still on the left center hash. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Gums will play a second and 10 for his team. Gets the snap, it's a draw play up the middle, trying to bounce outside now, now back to the middle. He's hit by a school of Tarpons after gaining about three or four on the run. That was number 20, Montrell Johnson, a freshman running back into the game. Clock inside of 40 seconds and ticking, so we're gonna have at least one more snap here in the third quarter. Yep, they'll have to snap it. It's inside of 30, the play clock just started. Be third and about six for the Cavs. Gums with the ball just north of the 
30-yard line, or I guess using the compass here, just south of the 30-yard line. I guess. Let's see if the Tarpons can force a punt. There's the snap, another draw play, and they're trying to bottle him up, but he's hit across the marker for a first down. Out across the 40 to the 42, that'll be the last play of the third quarter, but as the clock's at one, it stopped briefly for the first down. And now it'll run, and that'll be into the third quarter with our score, De La Salle 32, South Lafouche 0. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. football after getting the first down. Tarpon's defense is going to look to try to stop him here. Officials are reversing the field. Crowd starting to lighten up here. It was a good opening crowd though. The home side was very full. De La Salle traveled I believe in a fan bus as I saw a couple of buses. Yeah. They filled a good piece of their section as well. They'll play a first and 10 to the 42 yard line. So the benefit of this game, Ken, is now you get to root for these guys the rest of the year, the way the PowerPoints work. And they're a good team to root for because they're going to win a ton of games. New quarterback, that's not Gums. That's number 14, Fisher Rojas back there. Rojas waiting for the snap. Hands it up the middle to number 20, who's hit at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Yeah, they got him for a loss there. They handed it to Montreal Johnson. Another one of those situations came where it looked like Johnson maybe wasn't sure where should he go left, should he go right. When he finally did get the football, he was met by some tarpons, dropped for a loss. Yeah, he, he goes left to hand. It's, it's it's a little bit similar, not exactly, to the old cross, but the way back in the when they played the T formation with yep. JT. Now Rojas waiting for his second snap of the ball game. He has number 21, Ryan Hamrick, with him. Staying in that gun. Ball in the right hash. Two receivers out to the left. Strong side of the field. Gets it, hands it up the middle. Hamrick fighting for yardage, boys. Got a nice hole out across the 50 for a first down. Tell you, that's one thing that I don't know if it's just natural talent or if their coach do that. They read their blockers so well. There it looked like. If not for a little stutter step, he was going to run into the defense. He waited that half second, burst it free, and got the first down. Ball at the 47-yard line in Tarpon territory. Clock inside of 11 minutes. De La Salle is in no hurry, nor should they be. Rojas waiting for his cues from the sideline. Well, he's the one who started, as we mentioned, the start of the Jamboree game last week. Yep. Gets a snap, hands it to Hambrick in the middle. He's hit, pushes forward for about three or four yards, out across the 45 to the 43. Looking at this roster, as we've said, they've got a healthy amount of seniors, but, boy, they got a fair amount of 10th and 11th graders as well. So a good mix of young and old here for De La Salle. Clock running 10, 10, and counting and what I anticipate will be a fairly short fourth quarter here, especially at the pace that the offense yeah. is moving right now. Second and five, Rojas at the 43-yard line. Gets the snap. There's the old swing pass. It's off the fingertips of number six, Randall, and falls to the turf incomplete. Yeah, Rojas is a sophomore. He just doesn't quite have that same zip that Julian Gums has on the swing pass. That one kind of floated off of the hands of his receiver. Might see if he'll grow into it over the next year or so. Yep. So it'll be third and five now at 948 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Actually, not counting because the clock has stopped with the incompletion. Rojas joined by Montreux Johnson in the backfield. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Tarpon's in a 
Three, four alignment, gets the snap, handoff up the middle. Johnson looking for room. He gets across the 40 and much more, and he may go the distance. He bounces outside, 15, 10, five. He's in for a touchdown. The freshman, Montreal Johnson, hit the hole in the middle, then bounced outside, and nobody caught him. And De La Salle adds more to their lead. It's now 38 to nothing. We know the present is bright, but my goodness, when you got a freshman that could do that, the future's looking pretty bright as well. A lot of speed on the part of that, uh, the skill players for De La Salle. And you kick her in as well for De La Salle. That is gonna be 39, whom I do not have on my roster. Nope, I do, Never mind. Blake Giacone. Snap is down, kick is up, it is true. So with 9.37 to go in the fourth quarter, De La Salle leads 39 to nothing. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans. We'll be right back after this. One minute. My main man, Ken Freelander, tells me it's Vanderbilt 24, Thibodeau 14 in the middle of the third quarter here. It's 39-0. De La Salle, the Tarpons received the kick. Out across the 20, 25. Jelby Sheremy fighting for room on the sideline. He's pushed out of bounds. Down the 24-yard line. That's where the Tarpons will play it. Yeah, Derek Sullivan scored on a two-yard run for Thibodeau. And as you said, uh, they trail Vanderbilt. 24 to 14 late in the third quarter. Of course, those Thibodeau Tigers are going to be right here this time next Friday. They're going to be visiting the Tarps. Coverage of that one about 6.30 on ESPN New Orleans, kickoff at 7. And from there, we go up the bye a little to Matthew. The Tarpons will be taking on Central Lacoos, the first road game of the year. Officials getting the ball in place. Tarpons still have their first offense out there, trying to get a touchdown against this De La Salle defense. Ball's at the 24-yard line. Bayou with Allen on the side of him. Waiting for the snap. Hands it up the middle to Corbin. He's out across the 25, still driving. Gets maybe an extra yard or two near the 27-yard line. We just keep keep waiting for that one play that he's going to pop it free. Did work it to the 28, got a yard more than I thought. Picked up about four on the play. He'll be second about six and a half, seven yards here for the Tarps. Ball on the right hash, three receivers to the left, the strong side of the field. Bayou gets the snap, fakes it to Allen. Now shoots a little hook pattern to share me, which he caught it, but he had to go to his knees to catch it, which will signal him dead. He gained a yard or two on the play. It's a little underthrown. If he yeah. could have let him, he could have spun out of there and maybe gotten some yardage. But going from the right hash all the way to the left sideline, that is a very long throw. But didn't quite get enough mustard on it. As you said, though, picked up about three, about two. Balls around the 30-yard line. Tarpons trying to get a first down here. Baya hands it to Allen, trying to get the sideline. Now turns in, and he's bottled up there after a gain of a yard or so. It'll be fourth down for the Tarps. Running back just couldn't make the block that time. Yeah, you were 
calling for that big run. If they can make that block, he did have some green grass, but got tripped up at the last second, and the Tarpons will bring their punting team out. It's 7.47 to go in counting here in the final quarter. And Schick Snyder will be booming it to Joseph Husband, a sophomore, number four. Schick Snyder waiting for the snap. Snap is low, bounces to him. He fields it clean and kicks it down the field. Husband calls for a fair catch, drops it, and then falls on top of it at around the 23-yard line. So the Tarpons had a chance there to make something happen, but Husband fell on the football. Just like a husband, huh? <laughs> the first and 10 at the 23-yard line for De La Salle. 7.16 to go. Said Thibodeau comes to Memorial next Friday night. I think that everyone would sort of agree that'd be maybe a more realistic test to see where the Tarpons stand. This De La Salle team, there's something else. First and 10. The quarterback is still Fisher Rojas, number 14. We have a new back in there. Looks to be 31, but I don't have a 31. We'll have to check that out after the play. They hand it up the middle, and he's fighting for yardage. That is 31. I don't have him on the roster. He gets a yard or two. Tough start for Blaine Kiffin. They're, they're down, struggling. Down 28 to 10 to uh, Navy. I, I don't have uh, how much time left in the game. There's probably way too much to suit Blaine Kiffin right now. Navy is always a tough out they're going to give you 110 percent they're going to be one of the favorites in the american athletic conference six party and counting de la salle will play a second and seven from the 25. rojas gets the snap hands it up the middle rogers is there good pursuit they're going to drop him wow. for a loss good job there by the tarpon defense rogers wrapped him up then big number 93 ben dasau came in late put a body on him and dropped him to the turf. One of the rare negative plays there for De La Salle. Brings up a third and 10. See if they let Rojas attempt to pass here in a passing situation. Taking their sweet time, clock inside of six minutes. They've still got 11 on the game clock, or the play clock rather. Now they're getting themselves situated, but they've got to move. Five, four, waiting for the snap. And we're going to have a timeout here. Yep, there's a timeout for De La Salle. You can see they didn't quite get out of the no. huddle with the pace that they wanted to there, and they were always up against it with 5.46 to go in the game. Demarcus Mitchell just had a, a, a big run for uh, Thibodeau, 54-yard run down to uh, Vanderbilt's 11-yard line. We're going to be hearing his name quite a bit next Friday S night. Somebody put on here, he's a load to tackle. <laughs> he, he is a big guy, man. He, you know, just in terms of how he looks in his pads, how he runs, reminds you a little bit of Cam Newton. And he, he embraces that, hence the number one that he wears. And that'll be a fun challenge for the Tarpons. I know one thing, Coach Forsythe is probably very grateful there's no more Amik Robertson yeah, on that Thibodeau right team. That. He'll be making his debut with Louisiana Tech tomorrow. Another big debut tomorrow, Ken, is uh, uh, Devontavian Martin, Washington State University. That's right. A lot of locals have gone on to some big college football. Here we play third and 10 out of the timeout. Rojas joined by number 20, Montreal Johnson in the backfield. Johnson scored on the last drive. He's got some explosiveness. Ball on the left hash. They got a couple of receivers out to the left. Rojas will hand it up the middle to Johnson. He's not going anywhere. He's met there well short of the first down. Good job by the Tarpons. They had 10 yards to play with. They allow a yard or two, maybe three or four, but still well short of the first down. And you would think with the big lead here, they're going to just punt this thing down the field. No indication just yet. It is another name we'll hear a lot of during this football season. Uh, Anthony Puka Williams. 
with a 11 yard score for the Hanville Tigers. They're only up over West Jeff 35 to six. I actually picked Hanville to win that 7-5A district. I know that's a limb to go out on, but Destrian's owned that district for a while. But I think this is the Tigers year. De La Salle will punt it here as we're now inside of five minutes. It's fourth and six. Ball at the 28 yard line. Jake Gausher back to receive. Snap is a little low. He fields it clean, kicks it high wow. in the air. Gausher will get away from it. It really kind of takes a neutral bounce. Now even moving backward a little bit. It'll be down to the 33 yard line. There's our guy Julian Gums, the starting quarterback, <laughs> putting some air on that one. And we're going to have a water break timeout. So let's take a one-minute break. You're listening to ESPN New Orleans, De La Salle 39, South Lafouche Zero. We'll be back in a minute. Southern Pipeline Services and SPS Construction Repair and Restoration is proud to sponsor the South Lafouche football broadcast. Southern Pipeline Services and SPS Construction Repair and Restoration safely protecting pipelines, people, and the environment. Southern Pipeline Services, a quality cathodic protection, corrosion control, Ooh. pipeline maintenance contractor, SPS End Construction three, Repair Westman and Road Restoration, and all of land clearing, wow. drainage, pipeline repairs, erosion control, demolition, and more. Southern Pipeline Services, locations in Houston and Raceland. Good luck, Tarpons. Come see us at Lady of the Sea Community Pharmacy to hear about ways we may be able to save you money on your prescription medications. We accept most major insurances, and we also offer discounts through our 340B prescription program. Our friendly staff will take the time to review your prescriptions with you and assist in figuring out which programs will save you the most money. Come by our location in Frank's Supermarket in LaRose or call 693-9260 for more information. We look forward to being your community pharmacy. And Tarpons get some new jerseys in there. Austin Danos now in a quarterback. He hands it to Jacoby Washington on first down. Washington gets maybe to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. Covenant Christian leading Fisher 27 to 7 at the end of three. At the end of three, Terrebonne 17, Ellender 12. So the Tigers have scored 17 unanswered in that ball game. It's second and ten. Inside of four minutes here. Danos getting some work on the center. A little look into the future here. Five on the play clock. Gets the snap. Hands it up the middle to Washington. Getting outside. He's got a lot of green grass across the 50, 45, 40. Tripped up around the 35-yard line. First down, Tarpons Jacoby Washington with the Golden Motors first down. Good job by the junior tailback there. And a great job by that offensive line. Absolutely. I'm seeing... Some new skill guys, but I'm seeing the same offensive linemen. I still see Big Chad out there, Jai Ozeron, Dickinson. They've opened up a big hole for Washington there. Let's go for two here. First and ten, ball to 35. Three receivers to the right, strong side of the field. Danos gets the snap, hands it to Washington off left tackle, fighting forward, still driving, gets an extra yard or two after contact, out to about the 31-yard line. Gain of about four. Gowser will take a breather, as now Kevin Hernandez will check into the game on the edges for the tarp. Getting a lot of different guys some looks here. 2.53 and counting. Maybe the last possession of the game for the Tarps. They would like for it to end with a touchdown. Take a little confidence in the next week. Second and six, Danos. Gets the snap. Keeps it. No, he hands it to Washington, trying to get around the tackle. 25 20, tripped up at the 16 yard line. Golden Motors first down to Kobe Washington. Turn it up right now. Look, we saw that late in the Jamboree. He runs hard, man. He'd be a good complimentary back to Allen. He's got a scoreboard update, 31-14. Vanderbilt on top of Thibodeau with 116 left in the third quarter. Thanks to my man Adrian Rios for that scoreboard update. The Tarpons will play a first and 10 at the 16-yard line, 220 and counting here in the ball game. Been all Washington so far here on this drive. Danos waiting for the snap. This time he keeps it with a little spin move, gets across the 15, tripped up after about a gain of a yard or two. Clock will now run inside at two minutes. 
the ball across the 15. Coach Forsythe still coaching hard down there, trying to put his boys into the end zone. Which you'd like to see. Absolutely, break this shot out. It'll be second and eight. 143 in count, and Tarpon's working to the line of scrimmage now. Dan Oss with Washington behind them in sort of a pistol look. Ball right in the middle of the field. Hands it to Washington on the inside, fighting near the 10 yard line. Does pick up a couple. Gets right around that 10 yard line. He needs to get around the five yard line, a little short of it for the first down. He picked up about half of it there. 113 and counting. Be third and about four. Got to get to about the six yard line here. Tarpons do put a little pep in their step here, knowing that the clock's working against them here. Dan Oss, three receivers to the right. Ball still near the middle of the field. Dan Oss hands it to Washington, using his blockers, gets outside, five. Lunging to the end zone, but he's down at about the two yard line. That'll be a Golden Motors first down, and the Tarpons will play a first and goal. There, Kenny almost got up and put his hand on his blocker yeah, there before bouncing outside. Good patient run. So just give me a little space. I got a couple snaps to maybe punch it in. 43 seconds and counting. First and goal. Dan Oss reading the defense. There's a snap. He keeps it. He's going to walk in. That's an easy touchdown there for Austin Dan Oss. And the Tarpons are on the board. 39 to six, our score with 31 seconds to go in the game. The first touchdown of the year, Austin Danos on the quarterback keeper. A long, successful drive there for the Tarpon offense. Talked about having a good feeling to end the game. That'll certainly do it right there. See the young man in to kick. It's our guy Torres. Shelby Sheremy will hold. The snap is down, the kick is up, and it is true. So with 31 seconds to go in our game, the Tarpons do put one into the end zone. It's 39 to seven, our score. Good to see, young team not giving up, playing to the final whistle. And we got a one last cannon shot for the road as well. Again, I'm 30 years old. I've been coming to Tarpon games for now probably about 26, 27 years. The cannon scares the heck out of me, even <laughs> still now. I know it's coming, and it still scares me. <laughs> we'll be kicking it down the field one last time. De La Salle from there will probably just put a knee on it. I want to thank everybody for listening, everybody for watching on ESPN1003.com. I understand we've had some audio problems tonight, but we're going to get that fixed before next week. Thibodeau High will come to Memorial next Friday night. That's always a North versus South Paris rivalry. We hope everybody comes on, come on out and enjoys that ball game with us. Torres. Getting ready to boot this one down the field. After a successful extra point try just a second ago, the young freshman kicker. Coach Forsythe has a lot of confidence in this young man. They think really good things of this freshman. And he's going to kick it down the field. A fair catch called far at the 17-yard line by De La Salle. They'll field it there. They didn't want any part of a return there. That was number eight, Noble Scott, on the fair catch. And now we're a snap or a kneel or two away from being done here. Can I get some final thoughts here as De La Salle will improve to 1-0? and the Tarpons will drop one tonight. Well, I think we were hoping for something a, a little closer, uh, be that as it may. But of course, we, we always want that. Is, uh, as I heard when I got here, I knew, I knew they were the number one team in 3A, but uh, in a poll here and there, they're the eighth best team, meaning De La Salle, in the state of Louisiana. That, that's a big, uh, that's a big old elephant in the room. You know, I'm a, I'm a critic by trade. I tend to try to find weaknesses in, in big powerhouse teams. I didn't really see a weakness in this team. They did just about everything well. They threw it. They ran it. They're going to be a whale of a team. And for the Tarpons, you got to just keep your chin up. This is the toughest bear that you're going to face all year long. 
There's the snap. It's a dive up the middle. The Tarpons will bottle it up after a gain of a yard or two, and that will be the last snap of the ball game. As the final kick will bleed down now. And, yep, it's handshaking time. So our final score, De La Salle 39, South Lafouche 7, Ken Freelander gave you some final thoughts a minute ago, but maybe some, some areas to improve on as the Tarpons get ready for Thibodeau next week. Well, I, I think that uh, knowing what Thibodeau brings to you with a, with a lot of athletes, you, you're, your defense has to be ready for them, whether it's stopping the run, stopping the deep ball, screen passes, whatever it might be. At the same time, your offense can help you out by putting, putting their defense on the field, meaning the, uh, the Thibodeau Tigers have some extended drives, if you can, of, of, or possessions of three, four to six, seven minutes. You know I'm going to put you on the spot before we get off the air. Is LSU going to win tomorrow? LSU is going to win, oh, let's say, uh, 28, 31, maybe something like 37 to, to 20, something like that. I hope you're right. One last thanking <laughs> of our sponsors here. Our broadcast is sponsored by Lady of the Sea General Hospital, State Bank and Trust Company, LaFouche Motors, Joe Septic Contractors, Dan Oss. Vision Communications, Frank's Supermarket, State Senator Gary Smith, Dean Blanchard Seafood, Chris Goday Insurance and Financial Services, Golden Motors, Thibodeau Regional, Medical Center, South Louisiana Bank, Advanced Eye Institute, Dufresne Building Materials, Jimmy T. Jim LaFont, candidate for Greater Lafouche Port Commission, Division E, Total Urgent Care, and Southern Pipeline Services. I want to thank Joey in the studio, getting us on and off the air. I want to thank Todd and Nick and everybody working the cameras out on the other side. For Ken Freelander, I'm Casey Gisclair. Our final score, De La Salle 39, South Lafouche 7. We'll be back next Friday night when the Tarpons take on Thibodeau. Good night, everybody.